Yo, listen to Obama speaks. Um, that even after Trump was elected, uh, that you would have uh, the so-called Republican establishment who would say, okay, you know, it's a problem if um, the White House isn't doesn't seem to be concerned about Russian meddling, uh, or <laughs> it's a problem if um, we have uh, a, a president who's saying that you know neo Nazis uh, marching in Charlottesville, there are good people on both sides. You know that that's a little bit. Yo, so do y'all feel um, as a president who got more accomplished, Donald Trump or Obama? You get what I'm saying? Just to be real, who y'all think? Could be on the pale. Um, and the degree to which uh, we did not see that Republican establishment say, hold on, time out, that's not acceptable, that's not who we are, but rather be cowed into accepting it, and then finally culminating in uh, January 6th, where what originally was, oh, don't worry, uh, this isn't going anywhere, we're just letting Trump and others vent. And then suddenly you now have large portions of an elected Congress <clears throat> going along with uh, the falsehood that uh, there were problems with the election. I and, and the leadership of the GOP, briefly for a, you know one night when they still had this sort of Yes. Scent of fear in them, yeah. you know, going against the president. And then, poof, suddenly everybody was back in line. Now, what that, the reason for that is because the base believed it. And the base believed it because this had been told to them not just by the president, but by the media that they watch. And nobody stood up and said, stop, this is enough. This is not true. I won't say nobody. Let me clear. <coughs> there were some very brave people who <coughs> did their jobs, like the Secretary of State in Georgia, who was then viciously attacked for it. And all those congressmen started looking around and they said, you know what, I'll lose my job. I'll, I'll get voted out of office. Another way of saying this is I didn't expect that there would be so few people who would say, well, I don't mind losing my office. Because this is too important. America is too important. Some things are more important than... Justice. Our democracy is too important. We didn't see that. Now, uh, I, I, you know, I'm still the hope and change guy. And so my hope is is that uh, the tides will turn. We have to know each other. And if it turned out that there was a talented kid of a janitor who also happened to be on the football team, the banker president might say, hey, why don't you come work at the bank here? Because he knew each of, he knew that person. Now we have more economic uh, stratification and segregation. You combine that with racial stratification and the siloing of the media, so you don't have just Walter Cronkite delivering the news, but you have a thousand different venues. Uh, all that has contributed to that sense that we don't have anything in common. And so so much of our work uh, is going to have to involve not just policy, but it's also how do we create institutions and uh, occasions in which we can come together and have a conversation. In, uh, in Promised Land, you write, our democracy seems to be teetering on the brink of a crisis. Since you wrote that, there was the, the attack on the Capitol. You got the, the big lie being pushed continually right. by not only the former president, but Republicans in Congress. Right. Are we still just teetering on the brink, or are we in crisis? Well, I, I, <laughs> uh, I, think, I think we have to worry when one of our major political parties is willing to embrace uh, 